Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn how to work with conditionals. And what are conditionals? Well, conditionals are commands that help computers like Godot make decisions and do the right thing under certain circumstances. So let me show you an example. So I have been working on my project here and I've added scene one, scene two, but I've actually created a scene three. And so if I look at my code right now, I have my load scene one function, my load scene two function, and I've actually added a third function now, load scene three. So let's take a look at what this looks like when we run it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And of course you could see here, this is scene one, I click next, this is scene two. Now my next button is disabled, okay? So that's the first thing I need to fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and when I load scene two in that function, I'm not going to disable the next button. I want it to stay enabled. So let me run this and let's see if that did it. Yep, so I click next. This is scene two. The next button is still live. And if I click it, I'm actually adding scene two to the scene tree over and over and over again. But what we actually, what we want is we wanna be able to add scene three. So let's take a look at our on next button pressed function. So right here is our on next button pressed function. And right now this function only does one thing. It only loads scene two. But actually what we wanna do here is help the computer decide should it load scene two or should it load scene three. And in order to do that, we need a conditional to help the computer make a decision. So let's go ahead and figure out a way to do that. So the easiest way to do it, there's many ways, but one common way is to create a global variable up at the top of our code. And I'm just gonna call this variable current scene, and I'm gonna set its value to be just an empty string. So equals equals. Now I could have named that variable anything I wanted, but right now I'm just gonna say current scene equals empty string. Now let's run through our code here. When the program executes, the ready function runs, which calls load scene one. Load scene one executes and it loads up out of our library scene one, creates a copy of it, gives it a name, gives it a position and adds it to the scene tree. And then of course it enables and disables our back and next button. Now here we need to do one more thing. What we're gonna do is tell Godot that we want the value of the current scene variable to be equal to scene zero one. In other words, we're telling Godot, remember this information. After we've loaded scene one, the variable current scene is equal to the string scene one. Now, why did we do that? Well, because when the user clicks next in the on next button pressed function runs, we can use that information in a conditional statement. And one type of conditional statement is an if else statement. So let me show you how this works. So in my on next button pressed function, I'm gonna type if, and then usually you put the condition in parentheses. And so I'm gonna say if current scene, that global variable equals equals scene zero one, then I'm gonna do something. And what I want it to do is load scene two. Now notice this colon at the end of the line. That's very important. So why did I type equals equals? In computer programming, equals equals is checking for equivalency. In other words, does one side of the statement, in this case, the variable current scene, does it, is it equivalent to this string here, scene one? And if it is, in other words, if that's true, we want the computer to do this, load scene two. And if it's not true, we might do something else. And so what we can do is type in an else statement like this, and we could tell it to load scene three, like that. And so basically what we're doing, whoops, I think I need a colon here. So this is, we're saying if, this condition is true, load scene two. If it's not true, do something else. And what's the something else? Load scene three. So let me take a look at that. Okay, very good. And I have my load scene three function right here. And now you probably guess that 
when we do this, when we write the current scene variable, we need to do this for all of our scenes. So sometimes the current scene is scene two, and sometimes the current scene is scene three. So we want to apply that consistently across all of them. So now let's take a look at what happens. When I play, this is scene one, next, this is scene two, and we know that that variable current scene has been set to the string value scene zero two. So when I click next now, it's gonna take me to scene three. Now I have a little bit of cleanup to do here with my buttons, so let's go ahead and do that. When scene two is loaded, the next button disabled should be false. We don't want it to be turned off because we want it to stay active so that we can go to scene three. And now for my load scene three function, I actually want to manage my next and back buttons like we've done with the other functions. And so I'm gonna say next button when I get to scene three, disabled equals true. We're disabling that. There's no other place you can go. And now I'm gonna grab the back button and I am going to say disabled equals false. So let's make sure that that's working. When I get to scene three, the next button should be disabled. This is scene one, next. This is scene two, next, good. Now it's disabled. Okay, but now we have a problem. When I click back, it's jumping all the way from scene three to scene one. So we're skipping over scene two. You probably guessed where we're going here, but when the on back button pressed function runs, again, we need another conditional. And so we're gonna draw on our if statement. We're gonna say if the variable current scene equals equals scene three, if it's scene three, then we're gonna load scene two because we're going back one scene. If that's not the case, then we are going to load scene one. We're gonna call that function. Oh, and Godot's complaining because I forgot my colon at the end of the if statement. So let's go ahead and see if this works. I'm gonna run my code and I'm gonna click next and I should be able to go back to scene one. Let's make sure that works. I click back, voila, it's taking me to scene one. If I click next, it's taking me to scene two. If I click next again, it's taking me to scene three. Next button is disabled. Let me go back. This is scene two. I can go either way now, back or next, and I can click back again. This is scene one, and my back button is disabled. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to conditionals, and importantly, the very fundamental if-else statement, which is important for handling all kinds of events in games and other types of programming.